Right, this part over here, I'm going to show you how to go to fat skirt. They are severely high level. Internal corners and external corners. I have a but they do here. So I'm first of all going to show you how I'm, I'm going to mark this. So two seconds. Right, to mark this out. The first thing you're, you're going to need is uh, a square that square this corner off, or to define the angle of this corner. So what you want to do is you want to get a longer piece of wood, put it under the wall as tight as possible. Um, get another piece of wood, put it up tight to this bit of skirting, and draw a pencil line on here. That will give you the exact angle of that wall because all walls are never. I might as well show you this while I'm at it. On this here, on this external corner, you want to mark the floor front and back with a line out past the actual corner. Same in the back. I'll show you what that's for later. Right, that's. That's that wee line I showed you, oh, can you see that? That's that wee line I showed you earlier on there. Um, so I'm just going to show you what to do now. So the next piece of skirting is going to be making that like this. If you understand where I'm coming from. I don't know if you can see that, ah, you can see that. Ah. So what we want to do now is uh, we want to draw the profile of this onto this. So, just hold it up against it, level with the line that you've just marked, and uh, let me move it over. Can you see it? I'm just look on that viewfinder. It's a cameraman I need, but I'll turn this. So you just want to draw around this here profile. I'll show you that when I'm finished. All you're really drawing is the top profile because the other lines are ready to draw. So that's what you're looking for there, just go over it with a pencil. A wee curve on it. Up to nothing. At the top. So that's the mark you're looking for there. Can you see? Can you see that? There you go. As I say, it's just a profile of that one. Right, enough of that. Alright, the next step now is you're going to cut this. You're only going to cut this line here from here to where the profile starts, the V-groove. You're going to stop there. Um, plus another tap. You don't want to cut this line square. You don't want to cut it square. You want to cut it off the angle a bit. So, I'll show you. You don't want it square like that, you want it off, that's exaggerated, but that's the angle you want. So I'm just going to cut this now to show you. You want to stop at that V. As you can see there. So, if you want at this stage, you can cut cut the V as well. I guess by just uh, taking the pencil line. Just, you know, that's just so as you know, so as you know where to start your saw. You're going to take this V off here. This round bit here is going to be done with a different type of saw, I'll show you now in a moment. So, I'll just cut that V groove through that profile off. This saw is blunt, I think I'll buy a new one. I'll 
sharper your saw, the better results, obviously. So that's that now, as you can see. Can you see? Uh, that's that there now, so far. So the next part's going to be done with a coping saw. Uh, that's one of these wee adjustable saws. You get them in the tool shop. If you loosen that, it moves, moves the blade to the angle you require, or to the position you require. So I'm going to be using this this way. So I want the saw set like that, so as the, the saw doesn't hit the wood when I'm sawing. So I'll show you now what to do here. You just, uh, as I say, probably don't do it straight, do a slight angle back, so as the the back of the wood doesn't hit your bit of skirting that you're offering it up. When you're using a coping saw, keep the wee, keep the movements fast, and then the saw doesn't jam. Wee tiny movements, but fast. Slow now when you get near the top, you don't want to break that off. the saw and you know what you're doing but it stops the wood breaking off so I'll just show you this now that's what you're looking for there the exact profile of this bit of skirting board that's already against the wall so I'm going to swap I'll just swivel this around see I swivel it around so as you can see the that's where it's going I'm going to put it over here. Maybe get a better angle. Let's see. I don't want two seconds. I'll get that exact. Right. This is about the we've just sawed now. Hopefully, it'll. Uh, sometimes it don't, you don't get it exact first time. You have to adjust it. But we'll see. That's it there. That's what you're looking for there in the corner. You know, a lot of people think they have to miter both bits of wood, but that's not the way it's done because, as I said the earlier, all walls are different. None of them are exactly 90 degrees. So I'll show you the next stage now that we'll work on the external corner. Actually, I'll just show you that now. You see the mark that you've done on the floor? Right. Where's my pencil? Right, the, the external corner, you just want to put a wee mark on there. Just just slightly past the angle. Don't go this side of the angle. Go this side of anything. So, just slightly past it. And put a wee nick on there. And then... Go round to the back. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah. And draw a line up your wood. Right up to the top. Turn this piece. And uh, hold it against the wall tight. And do a wee, wee mark on there. And a wee mark on that edge. Put your skirting back here. Go round the front, 
see the two pencil marks on the floor. This pencil marks where the wall is behind it. This pencil mark is where you want your your miter. You want your miter to finish here. So she pause that. Now. Right, here's a wee top I like to do because I'm a pain in the arse perfectionist. Most people wouldn't do this; they would just guess the exact angle. Just put two bits of wood up against the wall I like got and clamp, clamp on there like that. Draw a wee line on the back just in case the wood slops. It shouldn't, it shouldn't slop because the clamps, clamps heavy enough. I like to put two clamps on once. Right, just remove that. Put a wee clamp on there to stop it moving. That's your angle now, eh, of the wall. So, put a wee bit of paper on here like that. Tight to the wood here. This will be near enough to the, to the nearest degree or two. You can always check it once you've cut the paper. That's straight edge of hat. There it is. So just uh, transfer your mark onto the paper. I'm showing this in real time here. So, alright, anyway, I'll stop waffling. I'm just going to cut this now. I'll put my glasses on. Can I see it? And just bend the paper along the line. That'll be a better idea. Cut that there off. Put that paper off now. So that's the exact angle of your wall there. Which one was it again? Um, was it that way around or was it the other way around? No, it was the other way around. It's that way. Ah, that's it there. That's the exact angle of your wall there. That, that's your angle. So they have that angle. They find out what the angle is of both skirting boards. Just use a bit of uh, mathematics. Just fold that in half. Fold that paper in half there along the line. That's your angle there now of both bits of skirting. I'm going to show you what I'm going to do here now. But yeah. what's the angle of your skirt in there? So This is really important, this. Right. Let me work this out now. Which one was which? Which is along that line? Uh, that's the way it was there. So that was the angle of your wall. So that's half of it. So put that on there like that. Keep it flush to the back of the skirting. 
just do a wee rough mark on here of your angle. I'll show you a minute now what to do. Don't do this around my rhino, you'll waste your bit of skirt. And so that's the angle marked on there now. That has to be joined up to the line that we've marked on the bottom. Remember the but the last wee clip I showed. Right, that's the wee mark with the angle at the top and the wee neck there. So I just have to uh, just continue this round here, like a wee, what a wee mark on the wood. So as you've got the mark for the front, join this to hit this with a straight edge. Like so. I'll show you how you set this up for cut it now. Skirting board mark. Now. So this butt here needs to be cut off. So I'll show you how to set that up now, the easiest way. Right. Here's your setup. Just somewhere rigid, like a table leg or something like that, would be ideal. Put two scraps of wood on the ground so your saw doesn't hit the ground, and then clamp, clamp up a skirting the. Making sure that you're clear, you don't want to saw your table leg. Making sure you, you've clearance for your saw. So that's that tight there. Now let's, go, let's go in the work. And uh, see this butt here? I recommend you using a brand new saw because if you don't, as you're sawing down, your saw tends to try and drift. And it's a whole hammer. So. This saw's a wee bit blunt, so I'm going to have to try and fight with it here to keep it straight. <laughs> Always saw the, the side of the line with your excess. Never saw the side of the line. I'll see if I can move this so you can see it. Right. <coughs> See my saw now is trying to drift that way because it's blunt. So I'm trying to fight that now. If your saw's sharp, you won't have to do that. So I'm actually putting pressure this way on the saw to keep it straight. Too miserable to buy a new saw. That's near enough there. We'll find out when we put it against the wall. Right, that's up against the wall, right? that's what you're sort of looking for there. You want that, but actually, it's, it's actually not perfect. I'll show you why. You see the back? It's actually cut a wee bit off the angle. But that can be adjusted. But you see, if you use a sharp saw, you'll get that perfect. But my saw is blunt. But right, I have to, I have to put a piece here now, another piece of wood here now. So what you do there is... You get your other bit of skirting. That you're going to use. Make sure this edge is square. Move this piece out of the road. That's not square, so we'll have to fix that first. That was just a rough cut that I, I done. So. 
Let's mark that night. What are we? What are we using? I actually use a bit of wood like that there. Up, up against, tight against the architrave. Draw a line up it. I'll get you the exact angle of, of your cut. Just cut that off with hand saw. So I'll do that now and I'll show you the next stage. Right, that's that angle cut. Let's see. Oh, it's near enough for a patty. So, what you want to do, I notice there's a wee wobble on that there though. So, to rectify that, what you want to do is... Let's see, where's that hitting? It's hitting the top edge here. And the back edge. Don't worry about that wobble yet, but I can sort that out. Right, you want to do the same thing now, in the corner over here. Do you see where your, your top edge is? Here, oops, sorry. You're a bit too close here. Just get your wee angle there again. Your pencil coming out at a slight 45 degree angle. And then remember that wee piece of paper with the angle on it. Just uh, hold that like that. Oops, sorry. Hold that like that. Mark a miter on it. Exactly. And join up your wee, or mark your wee line at the, the bottom where the the point of the miter, once you want the point of the miter to finish. Join these two up, same as the last time, and cut them. I'll show you that in a moment. I've just marked this other piece, the piece for over here. Um, i set it up the same way, clamped it to the tip of the leg, so I'm just going to cut it now, and uh, see how it matches up. This is cut, I'll see what it fits like. Might have to be adjusted, but I'll see. Do you know what? Do you know what? It's not bad. It needs a wee tiny bit of adjustment. As you can see, the walls a wee bit running off there. Miter's not bad. But it's a wee tiny bit out, but we can play in that way of playing. All you have to do there is this here. It's uh, not a wee bit, just that's it. See the gaps? You're always going to get that. That wall's running off too because it's hitting at the left, it's hitting at the right, and there's a gap in the middle. But that can all be sorted out. What has to be done now? I see here at the corner. It's has to be glued and pinned. I'll show you that now. So you just want to glue this now, going along there. It'll stop it moving in the future or anything. Just glue there, glue it all along there. Pick that bit off. Glue here. And glue, any, glue where it's touching the wall. Glue them, no you don't need to glue them there. Right against the wall. That's a measure. Just check 
Just make sure that they're sitting flush there. Make sure it's flush there. One on there should do it. One at the bottom as well, just to stop it. You've, you've had blue now. You're going to get a bit of grounds in here, so put a wee nail on too to catch this piece of wood to keep the skirt on the wall. So, and a wee bit maybe halfway down. So there's bound to be a bit of wood. I'll just keep the skirt on there at the corner nice and tight. And then over here. And I tend to do there's bound to be a bit of wood there, so put one here too, and at a slight angle. So I'm just pulling the wood on towards the architrave. You can sort out though, the fact that... I'm just going to put this nail on and then I'll, I'll get the fillers all sorted out and show you how to fill it up. So, I've actually got there fold along there. I'll just get a damp cloth. And rub, rub along the line that you've just done. That gives it a lovely professional finish. That's how you do that. I was telling you about this one over here, of, uh, there's a big massive gap there and I don't want to use it at the cock because it, it tends to sink if you, or sag if you use bits that are too heavy so what I'm going to use is, I'm going to use this stuff here, it's uh, for filling cars, us cabinet makers and joiners use it for everything because it's brilliant stuff you don't have to buy tons that big, you can buy wee small tons it's a two pack filler in other words, you need a catalyst, which is this stuff here, to get it to go, to get it to go off. So, if you're if you're mixing about that size, you need about a catalyst about that size. You don't. It's like golf ball size, the football size. If you can use that as a an uh, a measure, measuring guide. So I'll just mix this up now. And we're going to apply it to that gap the same way we applied the, the cock or the cock. Anyway, I'm just going to put this over here so you can see me now. I'm say this stuff's brilliant because it dries. It dries in about 10 minutes because of the chemical reaction of the catalyst and whatever blah blah so just catch a wee bit like that in your scrubber same again down the wall and out until it's full down the wall this filling process because it's sort of important to get this right because if you don't it looks like f fuck all so down and out 
when you're finished this you're going to run the scraper along the along the top edge just to collect up any excess like that these wee nail holes here now there's nothing worse than pinting over nails it looks like really bad so just sink in nails catching my wee bit of filler it doesn't matter if it's, if it's uh, sitting up a bit because you can sand it down it's better sitting up actually don't try and get it flush on this particular stuff in here because it's too difficult to sand on there, on there. but this bit will be easy sand it when it's hard and this is going to make it look really professional nobody works to these tolerances anymore and that's what's wrong with the world there's too many cowboys out there thinking they're joiners they're, they don't give a shit so anyway that's that filled up sit a wee bit on there and then for a bit of right we square block we had an angle on it a wee bit you cut if you want to do on um, here the sharp angle stops you taking paint off the wall. You might take a wee bit off it. That's it. That's it. Yep. Sand your floor. Take the sharpness off the edge. Do that. Do not. Don't, don't, don't leave your edge completely sharp. Round it a wee bit. Even round this corner here. The pencil stick better to you. And then what do you see now? You'll see the results straight away. Because that filler dries almost. Well, dries in about 10 minutes, 15 minutes. So I'll just continue pinting this now. I think I might just show you the end product. Right, that's it all pinted now and filled and what have you. I think um, you'll have to see if you can find anybody who can fit skirting better than that. Let me know. But I know I was going to show you there when I was editing the video. I forgot the uh, I forgot to show you how I done the, the cock. I'll show you now. I'll just do it along here because it needs a wee bit of fun. Just run a wee line like that. Get your scraper like like the like the last stuff. Pull down like that and pull it out. Scrape it off onto a piece of wood. Pull it out. Like that, what can you do here? Pull it down the wall like that and pull the filler out. See that? When I was doing the video, I, dele I deleted this one by accident. Remember, I was showing you the bit where I, I run a wet sponge along it? I'll actually get a wet sponge now, actually. Ah, the bit I've shown you the wet sponge. Just run your wet sponge along like that, that evens it up there. The wall needs pinted again, my green pint, I must do that. There you go. Thanks for watching.